Good morning. Good morning. I greet you in the name of our risen Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Uh, we have a few announcements in your in your bulletin. You'll find an envelope. Uh, I mentioned this last week. Next week we'll be taking a collection for Puerto Rico for the hurricane victims. Um, this money goes to UMCOR, the United Methodist Committee on Relief. Um, and 100% of the money goes toward uh, the people in, in Puerto Rico. Nothing is held back for administrative course, cost or anything like that. So we'll be taking that next week if you'd like to donate to it. Um, also on the back of the table, you'll find some information on something called hearts. If you know someone who is suffering from uh, Alzheimer or dementia, uh, there is a new program that's being started. It's being led by Reverend Eileen Daunt, and um, it will be held in the Ellenville United Methodist Church. Uh, if you want more information, if you know somebody that has dementia, as I understand it, it's a program uh, that includes um, Just lost it. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I, I think I need it. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's like they have crafts and fellowship time for fellowship with uh, with each other. So it's it's a good thing if you know somebody that is suffering from dementia besides me. Um, <laughs> please uh, take some information and pass it around. It's sort of like a, like a daycare for all. Yeah, it's sort of like a daycare. <laughs> it's like a couple of a couple of hours once a week. Yeah, that's, that's a good thing. But there's more information back there if, you're, if you um, would like to share that with people. On Sundays, uh, we have Bible study following the service at St. Mark's. And on October 15th, we have a charge conference at the United Methodist Church in, in Elmville at 9.30 a.m. I need reports from those who need to give me reports. And you know who you are, <laughs> myself included. I haven't done mine yet. And on Fridays from 10 to 3, the thrift store is open. Are there any other announcements? Oh, in the flowers, on the altar, and on the back, page, back table are in memory of Barbara Schwally. She had yeah. a beautiful service. It was beautiful. It was beautiful. It was beautiful. It was Okay, if not, let us begin worship.
In 588 BCE, the Babylonian army laid siege to Jerusalem, slowly starving its inhabitants to death. One year later, the Babylonians broke through the city walls, slaughtering people and turning survivors into refugees and demolishing the city totally including the Jerusalem temple, known as the house of God. Lamentations is a collection of five songs mourning the horrible event. I don't know how many people of you have ever read this small book of five chapters, but if you read 
you will be able to picture the horrific scenes of those days. To be honest, it's really hard to read because of so many terrible scenes popping up to mind. By the way, one interesting literary thing about Lament is that all five songs were written in the same pattern. In other words, each line begins with the next letter of the Hebrew alphabet. Probably, the author of the book tried to express the totality of grief, moving from A to Z, as it were. Traditionally, this book of songs has been known to be written by the prophet Jeremiah, who witnesses the destruction of Jerusalem. But according to scholars, it is not actually certain whether this book was written by him. But let me name the author of the book, Jeremiah, now for convenience. This morning, we have a part of the third song as our scripture reading. And among the five, this chapter, this chapter focuses on individual pain rather than communal difficulties. Because it is a personal confession appealing to pain, this song touches our hearts more, I think. Indeed, Jeremiah tries to comfort those in pain through his confession, and he instructs that hope for the future and life can never be forsaken, even amid extreme hardships. By God. But God, God of mercy. At the beginning of the song, Jeremiah speaks, I am someone who saw the suffering caused by the road of God's wrath. And she continued to say that God forces him to walk in darkness, break his bones, worries him so that he cannot escape, and make his chains heavy. He describes that God is like a bear lying you know, in wait or a lion in hiding. And the pain he has chews enough so that he feels God shoots arrows into his inside, crushes his teeth into the gravel, and presses him down into the ashes. Although we didn't read this beginning part of the song, and I just read it for you, now you might be very surprised to hear Jeremiah describes his pain too radically. And furthermore, how come he to describe God in such a terrifying and violent way? When we read this book for the first time, when I read this book for the first time in college, I couldn't understand the way he described God because it was Right? It was not God who brought him such a huge pain, right? But now I came to understand him a little bit better, <clears throat> excuse me, a little bit better than before, as I have been going through the times of pain, guilt, despair, and loneliness since my father's sickness and his death. And I understand a little bit better what he said in the scripture reading. I remember my affliction and my wandering the bitterness and the gall. I will remember them and my soul is downcast with him, within me. Yes, I came to understand him a little bit better because like him, I also feel like God silenced my prayers although I called out and cried for help desperately. And in our community, many people live with such bitter memories while sighing and saying, my soul is downcast within me. Perhaps we all have memories of passing through moments of pain with such sign. However, it is also true that such moments of suffering can lead us on the way to self-reflection and strengthening ourselves. Don't get me wrong, I have no intention to glorify or beautify suffering and sadness, 
No, I don't want. But certainly, we as Christians should dream of the world without pain and try our best to make it, although it seems an impossible dream. We have continued to go for peace without pain. We have to wait. However, it is our reality that we cannot avoid disease, loss, failure, and frustration in life, even though nobody likes to confront them. It's our reality. But in one sense, we cannot deny that we grow with the experience of failure and setbacks. We cannot deny we sometimes understand the depths of life through the moments of trials and pain. Indeed, this is the mystery of life. Indeed. Furthermore, if we trust that God bears the burdens of our sorrows and pain with us, then we can go through hard times and turn our mourning into the step to move forward. We have faith. We believe this is the power of faith. This is the reason why Jeremiah now makes a rather sudden but very important transition from despair to hope. He says, My soul continually thinks of it and is bowed down within me, but this I call to mind and therefore I have hope. The steadfast love of the Lord never ceased. His mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. The Lord is my portion. That's my soul. Therefore, I will hope in Him. Jeremiah finally discovers the root of hope in the midst of gloom. Here, the Bible gives us a very important lesson. That is, hope is restored through remembrance. It is restored through remembrance. The power enabling us to get through difficult times comes from our recovery of our memories of God's grace that has been given to us. When we are reminded of those memories, we gain the strength for living. Looking back, there has never been a time that was not difficult. Not a single moment has passed without difficulty and pain. But if we think about it well, there was also beauty, comfort, and joy behind that. This is because with the eyes of faith, we can realize that God's love has been holding us tight. In life, days of happiness as well as days of pain pass and change. However, there is only one unchanging thing in those passing days. It is God's compassionate love for us. When we remember that love, we can see God endures our pain together with us as well as becoming our wings to sustain our lives. God has been always working with us. We know faith does not promise a pain-free life. We know instead, but faith provide the power to turn suffering into a chance for a creative life. Of course, the things of, of, often happen in a way that we cannot comprehend with our own reason. However, those who trust in God's goodness, who are convinced that they are loved by God, do not collapse in the face of suffering because they experience God's continuing grace faith. Right, with faith, we will be able to get up again from there where we fall, and we will step up towards a higher place. 
Of course, it might take a lot of time to accept the pain inside ourselves. But remember, the Israelites also needed times of repentance and patience since they had lost everything they had had. But God led them back to their home from captivity at the end. And just like the Israelites, if we do not give up but keep seeking God of hope, then God will help us to the end and make our hope come true. We believe. We believe. So my sisters and brothers in Christ, let us not forget God's compassionate love for us, always toward us. Whenever we get to be tired of the trials of life, and when we suffer, let us remember the grace of God who has been with us, protected us, and sustained us so far. For us, our faith to God is creating a future home filled with life, love, and peace. Even through the bitter times of life, we will be lifted as long as we do not give up our trust in God. God promised. If we live with hope and confidence that God will make a way for us, then we will be able to get over all obstacles to come and we will be able to move forward again. God will make a way for all of us. God will make a way, right? God will make a way for us. So let us look up at the Lord of grace and confess together like Jeremiah. The Lord is my portion. Therefore, I will hope in Him. Amen. If you can, can everyone rise? And we sing Him, Lord of all hopeless.
Heavenly Father, thank you for bringing us all safely together today to praise you and commune with our friends and neighbors. Father, we ask your comfort and healing for many of our friends and family. Lord, we ask that you touch Ken Finning, that he may experience a restoration of his mind as he deals with Alzheimer's. And we bring his wife, Dee, Lord, we lift her up as she continues to provide care for Ken. Lord, we ask that you touch those that are trying so desperately to find a cure for this horrible disease that affects so many. Father, we lift Barbara Weinhoop. We thank you for her wonderful spirit, Lord, her spirit of service, and we ask that you heal Barbara and give her strength as she continues with her dialysis. Lord, we also lift Jimmy, um, who's been so faithful in so many ways. And Father, we thank you for them both, for what they've done for this church and our community. Lord, we continue to lift Stevie Bradley for healing. We remember Donna Coombs and Kathy DePew and ask your continued healing. We ask your healing, Lord, for all those that are suffering from cancer, that you may guide their physicians and help them defeat this disease. Lord, we also lift Joanna Garcia and praise you and thank you for healing for her and for all those who suffer, be it physical, emotional, or spiritual uh, pain. Lord, we praise you for touching their lives and bringing them through. Lord, there are many that are grieving today. We lift the, the families and friends of Barbara Schwally and Nancy Quick. Lord, both were faithful servants, and we have no doubt, Lord, that they are with you. But we ask that you provide their family and friends with comfort and let them know of your presence, Lord. And Father, this week we've experienced here in this country and abroad the hurricanes that have brought devastation and loss to so many. Father, we ask that those who have lost so much know that you are with them and that they may have hope that their lives will be restored. Lord, for those who continue to work on the rescue, I ask that you keep them safe and that you give them strength to do the unimaginable, um, unimaginable tasks that are ahead of them. Lord, I praise you and thank you for bringing my family through this hurricane. And although there was terrible loss of property, we thank you that each and every one of them are safe today, Father. And for all of those others, Lord, who will see tomorrow and will need to begin again, Lord, be with them, give them comfort, be with the rescuers, be with the emergency workers. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Christ, our Lord, invites to his table all who love him, who, 
earnestly repent of their sin and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sin before God and one another. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your law. We have not loved our neighbors. And we have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let's pray in silence. Dear Luminous, Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love toward us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. So let us offer one another the signs of reconciliation. Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. 
thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, the glory forever. Amen. Father of Christ, Father of Christ, totally broken for you, for your life. Blood of Christ, for you, for your salvation. He sacrificed his everything for all of us to be saved. Please come to the table and um, for the union with Christ Jesus, Christ Jesus, our Lord. Please come.